everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and today we're going to talk about 9600 baud packet, and we're going to look at some hardware that does that. We're going to go ahead and show how to calibrate for 1200. We're going to start testing for 9600, and it's just going to be a lot of fun, I think. So with that, let's go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I always forget. Do me a favor. Click the subscribe button, will you? And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And, of course, any questions, go ahead and make them down in the comments. So with no further ado, let's get on with the show. You know, there was a few different ways we could have done this. Uh, I wanted to show 9600 in action, but I wanted to make sure everybody had an opportunity to see 1200 baud. And of course, this whole thing started because of Vara FM wide. So I wanted to take a look at some software solutions as well for 9600 packet that would slip right in. Uh, problem was that uh, doing 9600 packet is a bit of an effort. Um, that, and I wanted to go with the most reliable chance as to being able to get this working in a video. Therefore, I kind of decided to approach this uh, with the hardware solution, uh, which is basically the uh, Cantronics line of products. And, you know, I hate to say it, but they make some really, really neat equipment. Um, here are their five big players. You've got the MT-1200 that's a mobile. You've got, of course, the uh, wireless modem 1200 plus, which actually is a commercial product, but still has a COM port. Uh, the uh, Packet Communicator 3 plus, right? Or the uh, KPC 3 plus that we all know and a lot of us own. Uh, that one in particular, great little unit. They've switched it to USB for the COM port, which is okay unless you want to try to run, uh, you know, a GPS or something on it, and then it becomes a little more complicated. Um, and then now you get into the bigger products that are dual port, such as the uh, Cam XL and the uh, 9612XE. Now, since... The top three don't handle 9600 at all. I kind of eliminated them from the uh, video because, again, uh, this is supposed to be about uh, 9600 packet. So here are the winners, right? We've got the Cantronics KMXL. We have the Cantronics Packet Communicator 9612XE. Each one of them has its good points and bad points. But we're going to take these two and we're going to kind of go through getting them configured for both 1200 and 9600 so we can run some trials and some other things to find out if 9600 is really worth it. Now, full disclosure, um, the, though these both are dual ports, they function a lot differently. And if you're looking at a dual port uh, TNC for your EOC or something like that, uh, I would really recommend a dual 1200 baud setup with the uh, KM or KAMXL, okay? Um, right now, that is the only device that handles two 1200 baud radio connections at the same time. Um, of course, the 9612 XC is a dual port too, but one port is 300 to 1200, and the other port is 48 to, my gosh, I think it handles 30, uh, 38.400 baud. Uh, but all that being said, uh, you know, getting packet to do anything easily in a radio environment is difficult. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at setting these two up uh, just minimally and, and doing some calibration. Let's start at 1200 baud. All right, so we're going to take a look at a couple different TNCs here. The first one I'm going to show you is going to be the Cam XL. Uh, this supports 9600 and 1200 baud, as well as a bunch of HF protocols. So it's a neat little unit. And interestingly enough, it's two port that you can do 1200 baud on both sides. The other one we're going to look at today is going to be the 
uh, Packet Communicator 9612XE. Now, this little gem right here is a little bit different. It has two ports, but one port will only go down to 4800 baud. So if you're looking for dual 1200 port uh, TNC, this is not the unit for you. However, it has a lot of excellent settings that we can use to do 9600 baud, hopefully with the radio that you own. Um, the problem that I had with the XL was for whatever I tried to do or whatever I worked with, I just could not get it to do 9600 baud consistently. So um, with that, let's go ahead and do a couple initial things. And the first thing I want to do is take a look, believe it or not, at 1200 baud. And I want to uh, go ahead and calibrate my system on 1200 baud. So let's get started with that. All right, well, check it out. Look what we got. We have our 9612 XL powered up, turned on. We've got it hooked up on port, uh, port one, and we've got um, it hooked to power and the computer. So we're all set to go ahead and do a 9600 baud, or excuse me, a 1200 baud calibration. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm gonna drop this screen here. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead. I use a program called Putty. Uh, this is going to be, uh, I'm going to go ahead and load, and we are set for COM10, which is what we're configured for the XL, or excuse me, the uh, 9612XE. Let's go ahead and let's open up the device. And what we've got is we've got some gibberish coming out. So what is that gibberish? Well, it's a brand new install, so it's going to go through and it wants to auto-detect baud rate. So we're going to wait. I'm set for 96, 8, none, and 1. And I'm waiting for it to ask me to hit the asterisk key. And it will auto-set it right there. And there I am. My A baud is now set to 96. So I'm all set to go with that. Okay. So I'm going to enter my call sign. And bada bing, bada boom, we're set to go. Well, are we? Let's verify that. So we're in port one, and we want to verify 1,200 baud. So the first thing we want to do is we want to do an H baud command. And we want to verify that, yes, one is 1,200, and two is set to 9,600, and we'll do that one next, okay? Um, and then... Let's make sure that we're actually on port one. So let's do a status and see, yes, my IO stream is on A1, which is port one, channel A. So we're all set to go. Now, how am I going to calibrate this? I got a couple options. I can do it by sound. It's not 100% reliable, but... Uh, it does work, and uh, I've shown how to do that in previous videos, uh, so I'm not going to duplicate it. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you how theoretically to do it right, and that is with a uh, spectrum analyzer. You want to take a look, or a deviation uh, uh, meter, but regardless, I'm going to toss a spectrum analyzer up here. And we are going to put this into calibrate mode, that C-A-L, right, for calibrate. And up at the top, I see it says 1200 baud. That means I'm on the right port and I'm set to calibrate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit T to send a square wave here. And down here uh, on FM is my uh, positive and negative peak deviation. Okay. Uh, and I want to set that for as close to 3.5 uh, kilohertz as I can. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, just put my mouse down here so I've got a decent reference. And when I hit T, I'm going to use the plus and minus key to raise or lower the audio level. So let's go ahead and hit T. And, ooh, I'm at about 1.4, uh, so I need to go up. I need to, I'm going to hold the plus key until I step into the threes. Oop, I'm in the threes. And I'm at 3.3. Uh, let's come up a little... 3.4-ish, let's come up a little higher, 
I want to get as close to 3.5 as I can uh, without popping too far over it. There we go. There we go. That's where I want to be, right there. That's going to be perfect for my deviation setting for, um, oh, uh, 1200 baud, right? So now I can make a note of the XMIT level, but when I hit X, it's going to go ahead and save it. So there you go. All right, so we are all set with that at 1200 baud. While we're doing this, why don't we go ahead and break, and I'll set up to do the same thing on the um, XL real quick, okay? So hang on. All right, so we're now hooked up to the XL. Uh, I'm on port two because that's the port that is the default. I hit my asterisk. We'll put in my call sign again, just like that. Uh, let's verify all our settings, okay? And the settings are a lot different by default on this. The commands are the same to uh, look at them, though. Uh, by default, I am on port 2. You can see by A2 there. Uh, secondly, let's take a look at our HBOD. And you notice that port 1 is completely disabled. And port 1 typically is the HF port on this, but you can also use it as 1200 uh, FM. No problem at all, running packet. But there's all sorts of other protocols you can do on this box. Now, now that we have all that, okay, we can do the same thing that we did before. We can go into Calibrate. And again, a little bit different. But the same thing. Screen's a hair different. It's telling us we're at 1200 baud. It's starting out at a much lower number. And by the way, the reason is the max of this XMIT level is 63. Now, those uh, playing at home do understand that uh, those numbers are based on high bits. So, um, anyway, with that, it kind of means that it is a 6-bit number instead of an 8-bit number. Anyway, with that, let me go ahead and hit T for the square wave, and we're going to take a look at our deviation over here on the left. All right. And, uh, okay. Wow. Our deviation is really high here. Oh, no, it's low. It's low. I'm sorry. I was looking at that wrong. Let's go ahead. i got to get my console back. All right, well, you can see we're in the cal screen. It's set at 25. That's interesting. Uh, but our mode is 1,200. Let's go ahead, ahead and hit T, and this is the number that we're interested in, right? Those two numbers right there, our peak and our uh, positive peak and our negative peak. And let's go ahead. We'll hit T to send a square wave, and then we can adjust out. So we're down to about 250 hertz, so I'm going to hold the plug. Oh, wow, that jumped fast. Okay, uh, let me come. All right, let me come down a little. Wow, that that hit pretty quick, didn't it? Uh, okay, this is really really sensitive. So I'm coming up. Got to be up. Oh, wow, that's too high. That might be it. Yeah. That looks like that's perfect right there at 42, right? Let's go into receive, and we'll go ahead and say thank you very much, and X for exit. And now, this is now calibrated for our transmit. So, both of our TNCs now are calibrated. Let's go ahead and see if we can make some connections, huh? Well, okay, let's go ahead and see if we can do a 1200 baud connection here locally. Um, on the uh, 9612. So first things first, let's verify our HBOD. And interesting about the XE. So anything that you put in from 300 to 1200 goes on port 1. And anything that you put in above 1200, such as 4800 to uh, 3800, 
four or whatever, it ends up on port two. And there's no distinguishing setting the individual ports because it figures since they are two completely separate speed ports, you're going to put 1,200 in, you must want that on port one. I find that curious because it's different on uh, other firmwares. But um, right now, port one is all set. Let's see what our status is. And our status is we are on port one. So let's go ahead and try to do a connect. I'm going to try to connect directly to uh, a local one out here, uh, ECSS. Let's see what happens. Look at that. There I am. I am connected. So we know that our levels and everything look to be pretty doggone good here on the uh, um, 9612XE. All right. So let's go ahead and say bye. We'll just connect. There we go. And everything went down the tubes from there. I had every intention of going through the whole calibration routine for 9600. Uh, and I accomplished the transmit calibration with no problem at all. And I was set up to test the receive calibration for the XE. I could not get it to work. And I couldn't get the doggone things to reliably make it. Uh, connections on a 9600 baud PBBS. Uh, and I had a friend of mine that was working on his stuff and he had stuff he needed to do with the family and it kind of fell apart. So, so the reality of it is that tomorrow morning I'm on the phone with, uh, Cantronics to find out what's going on and why I cannot get my receive to work properly. Transmit works great. The receive is what I'm having troubles with. So I'm going to get with them. Uh, I'm hoping to have more answers. But for right now, I'm ending this video with the 1200 demo. And uh, you know what? Stay tuned for the next video because I'm going to have a definitive answer on getting this configured. Or an answer that, you know what? It's not configurable on the hardware that I have and what hardware we can use it on, or it's just not a feasible idea to really try to do. And I find it hard to believe that these products are on the market and it won't work, but let's see if we can figure it out together. Well, yeah, another difficult time with 9600 baud packet. Um, I'm going to be on the phone tomorrow morning with my good buddies over there at Cantronics and, um, you know, really try to find out the transmit calibration went fine for 9600 and it seems like we're able to get to 9600 bulletin board systems or other TNCs. We're just not hearing them. And it's very frustrating when you're trying to do this from one side. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to contact them and find out, number one, why the audio receive calibration on the XC wasn't doing what their manual said it should do, uh, and try to figure out how I can verify that I have got it set as best as I can. And once I do that, hook to our radio, we'll see what happens. For now... I've got to tell you that 9600 is seeming like a, uh, a unicorn, you know, totally mythological. I know that people run it out there, don't get me wrong, but it seems to not work on any equipment that I have. So I really need to get some more information. That I'm going to ask also for your help from. If you have 9600 baud working, and uh, it's working well. Can I find out what your setup is? Can you put that down in the comments? I'd love to know. Uh, and uh, if you know of any issues with any of, oh, I don't know, the uh, uh, Yesu stuff or the Kenwood stuff that isn't really compatible 
with the uh, Cantronic stuff, let me know that too. And of course, while you're down there, do me a favor and click on subscribe. Uh, and any questions that you might have, put them down there in the comments. We try to answer them within a day or so. With all that, this is Stu. A little tired and worse for wear, but I'll be back soon, hopefully with more answers. This is AG6AG73, and I hope to hear you out there on the air.